Hello, it's Ruby, and welcome back to another university vlog. So, it's Friday today, and somehow it feels like I'm already getting behind on work, which I don't quite understand because term has just started. I have an interview this morning, just like for an article which has been written today. So I'm going to prepare for that now and then that's in 15 minutes and then after that I've got another call and then I'm going on to campus for lectures. We've got our Dickens seminar now. Suddenly, all of the trees are starting to turn and it makes me so genuinely happy because I love autumn so much. I love the colours of it. Kind of, I, I had a new leash of appreciation for spring this year and could see how beautiful it really was, but there's something about the colours of autumn which is just unrivaled any other time of the year. So I went to the Exeter shop. It's like basically merch for the university where you can get all your hoodies and things and I bought something I've wanted to buy basically since I started at the university. So I'll show you that when I get back. I'm very excited about it. I got back from campus a while ago now, probably like an hour and a half ago, and I've just been editing since then. I've just finished editing this video and I'm just making the thumbnail and then I'm gonna quickly watch the lectures for my life and death module before dinner. I think we're gonna watch a film tonight or something, just have a nice relaxed end to the week. I also need to submit questions for next week for our Q&A session for my life and, life and death module and I haven't got started on the readings yet, so. I don't know how that's going to go, but I'm going to try my best to just get some work done this evening. I, I kind of forgot that I needed to have all of the reading done by Friday, so next week I really need to keep that in mind, but um, beginning of term it's not the end of the world and I should be able to have a general understanding of the content by this evening. Also, I said that I'd show you what I picked up in that Exeter shop. As I say, I wanted to get this for a while. Look, it's a pennant. I just love how old school these are. I mean, they always remind me of like the 1940s, uh, 1930s, 1980s as well maybe, I don't know. But um, I love that they're a really classic thing and it's really cool to have one for my university. So I think I'm going to put it up above my Titanic posters there. But I don't know how best to put it up because it's quite an awkward shape and there isn't really like a standard way to attach it, I don't think. In the evening, I watched the lectures for my life and death module. This week, we are looking at the play A Chase Made in Cheapside, which is by Thomas Middleton. This was first performed in 1613 at the Swan Theatre, and we know this because the script, which was published in 1630, on the title page, it says it had been often acted at the Swan on the Bankside. It's actually the only play where we have secure evidence to say that it was performed at the Swan. So this play is a rather scandalous one about marriage and illegitimate children, like shockingly scandalous 
Atlas. Uh, it's a city comedy, which was a genre of play in early modern theatre. These would be set in London, often with large casts, and would play on contemporary references, mentioning actual locations in London. So Cheapside, for example, the namesake of the play was the commercial focal point of London. It was famous for its markets and anything could pretty much be bought there. And actually there were some side streets off of Cheapside, such as Bread Street, which are so named because that is what you would have bought there. As I have been with the rest of these vlogs, I just wanted to add something else onto the end of this video. I wanted to tell you my new academic year resolutions. These aren't really academic resolutions, they're not academic goals, more generally lifestyle focused. Um, but I wanted to share them with you because maybe you'll be able to take some inspiration from this and it might help you to form some resolutions too. I think it is a good thing to do at the, at the beginning of the academic year. So the first thing is to make sure that I go outside every day and I never go a whole day without leaving the house. And this should be easy to do, but um, a few times last year when I was here last autumn, um, I'd get so caught up with work that I just wouldn't leave the house and um, that didn't mean that I was only working, like I was still spending time with Blakeney and I was still doing other things, but I just wasn't leaving the house and I really don't want that to happen again because I always feel better for going outside. One of the most important things for my mental health is going outside, being in nature, and there is evidence to suggest that that is just universally the case. Being in nature can improve your mental health and so it is important to make sure that you actually spend time amongst nature if you can. Number two is spending time with Blakeney and like doing things that we weren't able to do last year because of COVID. Just making time for doing fun things because it is an incredible treat and I'm incredibly lucky to be living in a house with my best friend and I shouldn't take that for granted and should make the most of it. But number three leading on from that is to not feel like I have to socialise more than I w would like to. Um, and kind of knowing myself, um, something I was really trying to be in touch with during lockdown, I think I became much more in touch with that. Um, I am an introverted person and I do reach out to being by myself and I do enjoy my own company. There can be a culture of like pressure, I think, at university where you are expected to be extroverted and you're expected to socialise and that isn't necessarily a priority for me. Basically, I don't want to just socialise for the sake of socialising, if that makes sense. Doesn't mean I don't want to socialise at all, but when I've been at university in the past, like when, when I'm at university, I usually find myself feeling a pressure to socialise as an extrovert would when actually that's just not me and that's okay and the priority should be like doing things that you enjoy doing. Number four is to really involve myself in the academic culture of university because it's my final year and it's incredible that I'm literally like my I am a student like what I'm doing at the moment like the only thing I get to do is study that's incredible like I'm so incredibly privileged to be in that position and I don't want to take that for granted and so when I say immersing myself in the academic culture you know making sure that I make good use of the library I read around my subject I like learn for the sake of learning and I make that my prime focus my prime focus is being in that academic culture like attending talks debates and just I, I really want to immerse myself in that culture because as I say it's um this is my final year and I need to make the most of it Number five is to not go home so much. Um, I really, really like going home and I love being at home and I'm such a homing pigeon. I am really lucky to get on well with my parents and have a really good relationship with them and to enjoy spending time at home with my parents. And because of that though, I do get homesick and I want to try not going home quite so much. That isn't me saying I'm not gonna go home at all. I'm just kind of, know I know myself and I know that it probably is best for me to go home on occasion, but I just don't want to go home as much as I used to. Number seven is to make time for personal growth and focus on personal growth and just make sure that I'm looking after myself and my mental health. I really do believe that nothing is more important than your mental health and it's really, really important that you make sure you are looking after yourself. Um, it's more important than grades. It's more important than commitments that you have. Like, I know it's, over it's overstated, but if you don't make that time for yourself, you're unable to commit yourself to other things and you're just not going to be as present and engaged and making the most out of opportunities as you would be if you were looking after yourself. Um, it's overstated but I don't think we can be reminded of it enough and I know that I benefit from having that reminder every now and then so this is that reminder for you if you needed that. And then finally re-evaluating and kind of having more perspective when it comes to studying and that's not me saying that I want to study less, uh, it's 
because I, I do enjoy studying and as I said I want to involve myself in the academic culture of the university very much but it's being aware that I don't have to do everything. They give us a lot of secondary reading, extra material, prompts for further reading and I have definitely got sucked into the trap before of thinking that I have to do all of that when that is totally not the case, you don't have to do all of that, lecturers don't expect you to do all of that. And one, one thing I started doing last year, like it's not a new thing, I've been doing it for maybe, I've, I've been doing it for nearly a year now, it's kind of something I just want to continue doing, um, is when they, so they give a secondary material, what I am doing now is kind of I'll look through the secondary material, I won't read all of it and I might not even read any of it if I don't find any of it interesting. Focusing on following my academic interests as opposed to just doing something because I've been told. I mean the reason they put these resources up is so if you're interested in it you can learn more about it and I think I didn't used to have that, I didn't used to have that approach to it. Still very much in like school mindset of if I'm given work that's what I'm supposed to do um, but it's just not like that at university and like chatting with my lecturers I did realise that. So now what I do is kind of I'll look through, I usually read like maybe one or two of the secondary critical essays um, but then I will um, look at kind of my own interest in the text and then find other critical essays like myself and then read those. So yes, just keeping perspective with studying and also if I don't have the time for it that week or it's going to negatively impact my mental health during like extra work and things, it's really easy to forget that your degree is as much as you give to it and um, I, I obviously want to make the most out of the degree. Lots of students will have to work. You might be a carer for a family member. I really do recognise that I'm in a privileged position in being able to study full time and I don't want to take that for granted. Um, but equally, I know that there is a kind of like, there is a base level of what you need to do that week. And if I can only do the base level one week, that is okay. And it's okay if you can only do the base level one week. Okay, that was a little bit of a ramble, but um, I hope that was in some way interesting, I'm not sure. Um, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope that you have a productive week. Bye.